Howdy folks, we are working on a Fortec jet pump. Um, I've taken the bucket off. We got the nozzle off. Pretty simple stuff. We're going to go ahead and take the cone off and get this uh, impeller out. Get this thing uh, apart and put in new bearings. I noticed that the bearings on this one are going bad because if the boat is out of the water and uh, you give it a little bit of gas like as if you were to blow it out, you get an extreme rattling noise and so I'm attributing that to the bearings being bad potentially. So what I've done next is uh, put the pump in my vise. I like to loosen the nut first. Um, it's a 30 millimeter socket uh, or a one and well 30 millimeter is what you want to use but if you don't have a choice then you can get it with a a one and a quarter, uh, let's see, yeah, one and a quarter, so one and an eighth isn't enough, one and a sixteenth is too small, right? so one and a quarter, 30 millimeters, so I like to loosen this nut first, and then I'll go ahead and loosen that. I always put my configuration like this, I like to put the actual uh, impeller tool in my vise, and then I use a special tool for the other end of the shaft here. Make quick work of getting the cone off. Inspected the pump, bearings um, for any water, anything that you know looks suspicious. I don't necessarily like the color that I'm seeing, uh, but you know I'm committed to changing it uh, regardless of the color. When I reorient the pump. Uh, once I have the impeller off to remove the uh, spring clamp here I'm going to want to have this tool here at the appropriate tip now to get the oil seal out what I recommend is taking a screwdriver a long one placing it on an angle like this using the corner of the screwdriver to actually carve into the oil seal the oil seal is a rubberized metal um so the rubber helps it sit in tight the metal gives it its rigidity uh, and it lasts pretty long as well because of this combination put the screwdriver sideways you're going to want to dent that metal get it to flex a little bit then you can come here on the side uh, again tap on it with the rubber mallet and the screwdriver and that'll help it uh, pry up like this and then you can go ahead and finish taking it out so here we're going to want to remove the oil rings or additional oil seals these will be o-rings here you notice on mine um, i mixed two different color uh, greases it looks like uh, i use this uh, synthetic grease so i'm gonna have to double check uh, what grease is in here see what's going on there's a couple of seals we want to get out of here and then we can go on next thing we're going to want to do is take these two o-rings out so we're going to replace those as well i'm going to continue to wipe down the inside uh, with some old rags and what that's going to do is let me know if there's any burrs in there because it'll definitely hook this sock, hook the cotton on this sock, um, and then I'll spray it down to get any dust out of it, um, which there shouldn't really be any because I'm not going to keep touching this uh, with my bare hands or moving it uh, to places that are dirty because what I'm going to want to do is get this cleaned and get the, the new uh, bearing back in, the new seal and bearing and everything obviously back in. So. I'll clean that, I won't bore you. Next is to press the bearing out of the pump <clears throat> and then we'll press the shaft out of the bearing. So now I'm going to uh, have a race bearing kit. So I'm going to use one of those center punches to punch the uh, uh, seal that's still inside of the uh, jet pump out and then we'll go ahead and reassemble this is the bearing and I'll show you its orientation 
when I put the new one in. Also notice the orientation of my jet pump. I actually flipped it over to get this bearing out because uh, the shorter distance was that way. Uh, I like to press uh, as short as possible and where there's clearance. So if there was another lip on this that prevented me from pressing it one way or the other, then obviously uh, I have to go in that direction. But this is the true seal. The other seal was just a cap. This one here is the actual seal. It's going to have two um, those rings that you see in there that are flat. They're actually on the, on new seals. They're actually pointy, and they um, they mate to the shaft. Uh, for a perfect fit. So that's why it's important to have a shaft that's true of round uh, so that your seal doesn't uh, get any gaps in it. Uh, one, and then two, obviously, if something is spinning or rotating, uh, you don't want it to have a wobble in it. So. so here we have a shaft clear of any uh, of the other parts. Typically, the race gets stuck on the shaft, or yeah, I guess typically, I'd say about almost half the time the shaft, the race gets stuck on the shaft. The race is this piece here. Uh, this is the race. The race is on the inside. You can have an inner or outer race, uh, but the race is actually what connects or is pressed into anything. So in this case, uh, there we have it. So... I'm going to go ahead and press this uh, bearing onto the uh, shaft and we'll go from there. Here's a look at our bearing pressed onto the shaft, um, nice and snug. I put the numbers of the race against the stop or uh, this would be what I call the back side of the pump. The other side is where the impeller is. And so we know the impeller screws onto the drive shaft. So if the wear ring is on that side, the impeller is on that side, then we need the threads for the impeller on that side. And we know these are the threads for the impeller. So we'll go ahead and drop that in there. Over the bearing, it uh, goes down about halfway. Um, and then we can go ahead and set up our press. I still have my wear ring in there, so I need to put the uh, plates uh, in a position where it uh, supports the pump but doesn't uh, smash my uh, wear ring because as you know the neoprene seal and the and a part of the wear ring stick outside of the pump. I'm not sure if I said it before but when you are pressing your bearings you always want to put uh, whatever you're using as your uh, contact on whatever needs to be pressed. So when I was pressing the bearing onto the shaft, you want to press on the inner race. And now that I'm pressing the bearing and the shaft into the pump, since this outer ring, which would also be considered a race, is being pressed into the pump, I'm going to want to apply pressure to that. So you see I have the pump oriented uh, for the seal to be pressed in. Keep in mind the seal is double lipped and both ends protrude in the same direction i am going to put this down in the direction that it would appear uh, that the protruding end outside of the bearing the other one protrudes into the bearing uh, is facing me which is also facing the uh, impeller and uh, it just seems like the natural way it would go on so now we have the seal the shaft, the bearing, all pressed back into the pump. Now we're going to want to go to putting in, uh, looks like we've got more O-rings to put in here, more grease to put in here, and those um, uh, clips, C-clips. So these are my old rings, O-rings, these are my new ones. I got them in this kit here that has several. Uh, O-rings in them and if you're wondering which one you should choose just set them here on top of the pump obviously the one that's too big or the one that's larger than the pump is basically where you want to start um, the choices I had were smaller than these so if they're too small they're just gonna fall in too easy so before I do this I'm going to get my uh, jet pump bearing grease 
put some in here and then put the uh put the o-rings on just the coating and you can see here i like to do that with my gloves on i like to do a lot of this with my gloves on but uh it, it just makes it easier to, to wipe around so you see here i have the uh o-rings nice and oiled and then just extra that's my assistant there the extra loop go ahead and wipe that in there and go ahead and put the actual uh double uh, double lip there. I'm sorry, a seal. This is a double lip seal. So in order to protect the seal on the shaft here that we just pressed in, we're going to drop in our spacer. This one here happens to be plastic. Or at least it feels yeah, it's plastic. And then to cover the spacer, we're going to put the... I don't know, I guess we're making like another seal. So we'll drop this in there. Um, let's see, we'll have to press it on. It won't take much to press on since we uh, tapped it out. And I say I see what happens. We'll see what happens, but I had 400 hours on this pump already, so I know what's going to happen. It's going to work great. As far as orientation for this um, seal, if you want to call it that, well, it is a seal. So the orientation for this seal, the flat side goes down, the side that uh, the grooves are on goes up. If you noticed on the one you took off, it should be oriented the same way. We're going to go ahead, since we're all done with pressing, and get the uh, clip inside of here. There we go. So we have the clip in there, seat it well, give it a little tap, make sure it's down in there. But I can tell it is. So now back to putting the impeller in. We got to flip it around, put the nut on the other side for the shaft, uh, fill it up with grease, and um, now to get the nut on. I do have the pump oriented as if I was going to take the impeller off. Um, this is 90, uh, 92, the manual says 92 foot pounds of torque on that nut. So I have squeezed the heck out of this XPS tube. Um, there is a recommended amount. I just fill it up, I don't care. I get this whole area as full as possible and um, I pretty much use a whole tube of it per pump um, so I'm gonna clean out my cone and it's a good time now that's the difference uh, there is a, a viscosity difference between this jet pump and regular synthetic XPS oil so make sure that you are using the um, one that's designated Although that's synthetic, I'm sure it would work. Um, I think this one sticks better, and that's going to be more important. Because that doesn't turn into an oil, which would actually be good. Uh, but you're going to want something that's, if it doesn't turn into an oil when it gets wet or when it gets to spinning, then you're going to want something that kind of sticks and stays where it should be. And I believe that this this will accomplish that a lot better so so I have my mountain there a little bit of excess here obviously that'll go in there I have it packed in very very tight around there I'm gonna clean out my threads put some put some blue Loctite in there get the comb back on and uh, the pump job will be over and uh, all that'll be left is installation so there you have it I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you appreciated the way I showed how to orient uh, the different pieces rather than just put them in and put them on give you a little bit of backstory of why things are done a certain way uh, and this is one of my favorite jobs to do it's uh it's very pleasing to press in and out and clean out the cones and things like that this is definitely a fun job i hope that you find it as uh easy and fun too again this pump had 400 hours on it uh, I had done the original uh, replacement of the bearing about 
two or three hundred hours ago so as you can see this pump is uh taking a licking and it's keep on ticking now when i'm putting the impeller back on i do put it on the way uh that you'll probably see it done most mostly uh when i take it off i always put the uh nut in the clamp or the the part that looks like a nut i put the uh in the clamp but when I'm putting them on, I do it the reverse way. I uh, actually added a little bit of uh, grease in that area as well. Um, just seemed like the right thing to do. The manual doesn't say to do that, but it doesn't say don't. Um, so eh, we'll see what happens. So here we have the famous extreme off-road ATV park. I have to come here to hang out and watch the ATV uh, people do their thing. They love to cross the water. Here we have, on the right, you'll see them pan into the screen. They actually fell into the water. Like I said, the air temperature is 60 degrees. Uh, they couldn't make it back to their vessel. They were swimming helplessly. Their friend was supposed to be around to save them. By the time he came around, he was laughing at them, and he ended up getting stuck on this sandbar, so I guess the joke's on both of them. <laughs> 